Well, good morning and welcome to First Methodist Church. If you guys will stand up as we start worship, we are going to sing great things. This morning. It's so good to be with you. My name is Kayla Earlbeck. I'm the lead youth minister here at First Methodist Church, and I want to take a minute to welcome you. Uh, welcome those that are watching with us online. Uh, we'd love for you to uh, comment below if you're watching on social media and just let us know that you're watching with us. If you're watching on our website, there's a place below where you can check in there. And if you're here in person, um, on your Connect card, I mean, in your bulletin, there is a Connect card. You can just tear off Put your info on that and put that in the offering plate here later in the service. Uh, we, we would really appreciate you doing that as well. 
I want to welcome you if you are a guest with us today. Uh, back in the back is our welcome desk, um, and we would love for you to stop by there after the service and give you a gift. Miss Nikki's back there, um, and so she would love to visit with you. She's wonderful. You'll love her. Um, and also, uh, just a little bit in the service, um, here in a little bit, we will have a time of prayer. And so if you have a prayer concern that you would like to share or a joy that you would like to celebrate, you can write that on the prayer cards in the back of the chair in front of you, or you can text it into the number on the screen, 290-4561. Uh, we would love to pray over that together uh, here in just a little bit. Um, at this time, I wanna pray with you as we continue in worship, and I wanna encourage you. Uh, I loved the verse of this song, and I'm gonna butcher the lyrics, but it said, God, you've done great things, and you're gonna do them again because your promise is yes and amen. And so I just wanna encourage you with that this morning to think of what is something great that God's done in your life or that you've seen him do. Let's praise God for that, but also remember that he's continuing to do great things. And so as we worship and as we come to God this morning, um, know that he hears your prayers. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the chance to gather here this morning, and we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your promises and for your faithfulness, and God, I pray that you would be working in our hearts this morning, Father. Would you draw us closer to you, and as we enter into your presence, and as we sit at your feet, and we bow down, and we lay everything we are, everything we have, everything we're worried about, everything that we're um, struggling with, it was we lay that down, Father, would you do great things? Would you do great things inside our hearts, but also do great things through us? God, would you be glorified in all that we do? We love you, Jesus, and we pray this in your name. Amen. If you guys will stand back up with us. We're going to sing, Great Are You, Lord. You give life, you alone, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. A great So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring life. Shout. 
was by with the precious blood of Jesus Christ to come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was by with the precious blood of Jesus Christ that chorus one more time. No, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you guys may be seated. Amen. It's time, uh, this time in the service, we want to spend some time in prayer together. And so if you have a prayer card that you would like to turn in, if you'll raise that up, I'll come get that from you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I've got a few here. This is from Kate. It says for her papa. Did I say that right? Is it papa or papa? Papa? I say, I call mine papa, so I want to make sure. Um, And Colin also, quick healing for papa who injured his ribs. So he'll be praying for Kate and Colin's papa this morning. Amen. Thank you. This is from Tulu. Um, I'm so thankful to God for his blessings. I went from having no scholarships to being recipient of two scholarships for the fall and spring semester. Praise God. We'll be praising God for that today. Thank you for sharing. And then I've got a couple here. This one says, continued prayers for the Mercer family and healing for uh, Letha. I'm saying that right, maybe. Um, he'll be praying for the Mercer family this morning. Amen. Thank you. Uh, This one has a couple praises. Uh, Tomorrow is John Wesley's birthday. Um, So we praise God for John Wesley and all that he did through him. Um, The preaching team is wearing a fun John Wesley t-shirt today in honor of him. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. And then also Wayne Hall's birthday is today. He's not here this morning, I don't think. But who will be praying for Lane this week that he'd have a great, blessed birthday. Amen. And then... uh, This has a praise, man, oh man, God's faithfulness, God's provision is real. Amen. Who believes that this morning? Amen. And a a prayer for the Wesley staff retreat this week. Um, I I know they're going to have a great week and we pray blessings over them. We'll pray for the Wesley staff from WT this week. Amen. Okay. Well, as we enter into a time of prayer, um, I want to invite you to pray where you are, or you can come up here to pray if you would like to. Uh, The altars are open, but I'll give you a few moments to pray uh, yourself. I'll pray with you, and then I'll I'll close us in prayer in here in just a moment. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we know that you um, you are our Father, you're our Savior, you're our friend, and you are our ever-present help in all times. And so we come to you this morning, we pray for those that are in need of healing, that are in need of peace, that are in need of your presence and your hand upon them, whatever they may be going through, Father, we pray that they would, in this moment, feel this extra sense of your presence and your peace and that you would 
uh, surround them with people to encourage them and to uh, help them to persevere and to trust in you. Father, we pray for, um, we just give thanksgiving for the things that you've provided, the things that you're doing in our lives. And those that have been mentioned this morning, we give you glory. Father, you are good all the time. And we thank you for that. And Lord, um, anything else that might be on the hearts of those in this room this morning or that are watching online, I, Father, we, we just proclaim that you are good, that you are able, and that we choose to trust in you in all things. And we choose to worship you through all things. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I think I'm going to praise God for some rain I hear too. Amen. I'm going to invite Miss Kim up and all the kiddos. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sneak back here this morning. Do I not have any friends? Come on, friends. Trouble one and trouble two. Come on, don't leave me hanging. Here, I want everybody to come sit right over here. Good morning. I've seen most of you this morning already, but <gasps> hello, Miss Hazel and Miss Kate. I hadn't seen them yet. So glad y'all are here. All right. Evan, are you like too close or can you see what I'm doing up here? You can see, okay. What does this look like? Water. What if it's not? It is? It's Sprite, let's see. It moves like water. It's not bubbling. You think it's holy water? I'm not that special, but thanks for thinking that. Must not be Sprite. There's no bubbles, right? Just a little on the top. But that's okay. But that's not like, okay, when I drink Sprite and it bubbles, it like pops and touch my, touches my nose. Let me, I'll test it. It's water and none of those bubbles popped and got my nose. It's just water. It's plain water. Let's see if it stays like that. When I pour it in this cup. Um, it's big red. I think it would bubble a little bit more. Food coloring? Man, I don't know. You tell me if that's just food coloring. You better smell that. It tastes like regular water. Tastes like regular water. I smell strawberries. Evan, what do you smell? Kind of like something? Apple, strawberry. You want to smell it, Hazel? Does your plain water that come out of the faucet do that? Mine doesn't smell like that. And it definitely doesn't come out red. <gasps> I must have done a magic trick. Was it magic? No. You want to know my secret? I used Jello. Jello? I used a little bit of Jello. Strawberry Jello. I to make a change. I am so glad y'all think I'm super cool, but I am not cool enough to just make things happen. But I know somebody who is. God can just make things happen. And he used Jesus to do some really cool things. And that's what my story is about this morning. 
Jesus is at a wedding and his mom is there and his friends are there. And like the whole town is at this wedding. And Jesus' mom comes up and goes, Jesus, we have a problem. We're running out of stuff to drink. He's like, Mom, okay. Go buy some. Yeah, go buy some. He goes, Mom, I'm not ready to do things yet. I'm not ready for people to know who I am. And you know what she does? She ignores him. And she turned around and she goes, um, guys, go do whatever he tells you to. And then what is Jesus going to do? His mom gave directions. Is he going to disobey his mom? No. There was no age limit or expiration date on the commandment that says, obey your mom and dad. So he's like, mom, okay. So he looks at these guys and he says, do you see all these jars over here? Take them. Go fill them with water. From the lake. From the lake. Now, how yummy is that going to be? Bad. It was going to be dirty. Fishes. Fishes. Who knows what's in there? But it wasn't nice and clean and clear like the water I had here. But they did it. They went and filled them up. And they said, okay, now what do you want me to do with them? And he said, I want you to go pour some in that man's cup. Right, Colin? In that man. That man that they told to go pour in his cup, he's like in charge of the whole night. And... You're right, you shouldn't pour anything into anybody's glass without him knowing. But he did. And when they did, wine came out. It wasn't the dirty water. And when he took a drink of this wine, it was the best wine that they had ever had. It was the best. Jesus took something that was not super cool, it wasn't good. It probably would have given him tummy aches, and he turned it into something good. He turned it into something better. And he kept the people together. He kept them having fun. He brought them. It's still just ugly water. He needed to make it a big deal. And when he did that, People thought, you know what, that man right there, he's something special. And people began to believe in him. And that was the first miracle of many, many, many. And every time Jesus did a miracle, he did it to say, hey, let me show you who my God is. Let me tell you who I am and all the cool things that I can do for you. And everything Jesus does is to make us better, to make us our best just like he did with the water. And that is really cool, isn't it? Yeah, you're thinking. It would be cooler if what? If Jesus did it. I know, I tell you, I'm not that cool. I pretend a lot, Colin, to be that cool. But I am not, I'm nowhere near. So, are we ready to pray? You want to pray, Miss Kate? All right, come here. All right, pray us out. Uh, You're good. Say thank you, God. Thank you, God. For this day. For this day. And letting us be here together. Let's be together. And for making us new. For making us new. Amen. Amen. Good job, Miss Kate. All right, guys. I will see y'all later. The scripture reading for today. Is it on? Hello. The scripture reading for today is from John 2, 1 through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. 
And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this and the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I have a couple of uh, assistants helping me this morning. Thank you guys very much. So that's perfect. Thank y'all very much. We are continuing a sermon series today called Recreation Recreation. I'm going to set this up here. All right, so um, y'all heard it earlier. Today, we're celebrating someone's birthday. Who knows whose birthday? John Wesley, I heard it, amen. So tomorrow is John Wesley's birthday, and um, he would have been 318 years old. So in honor of his birthday, we thought it'd be fun to play a game this morning. Uh, this series, uh, Recreation, Recreation, uh, if you, I think this is week two. My weeks are running together. But um, this is a fun series for this summer, and we want it to be um, lighthearted, and we want you to come comfortable. Uh, if, we, if you haven't heard yet, we want this to be, uh, you want you to dress comfortably. If you're comfortable in a tie, you wear that tie. But if you're comfortable wearing a t-shirt, you wear that t-shirt, and or anything in between. And uh, we just it's a fun series. We want it to be a fun summer and, uh, and enjoy one another. So I have this trivia game this morning about John Wesley, and I need two people who are going to, two adults, okay, who are going to come play. And what you're playing for is this John Wesley um, vintage limited edition straight from uh, Amazon <laughs> bobblehead, Okay. I should have prepared that better. Um, so, big deal, $24.99 if you need, if you, yep, okay. Um, so, I need two adult volunteers. I'm going to let you think. Oh, I got one. Come up here. I got someone volunteering someone else. And we say no. I oh, got someone volunteering someone else. Oh, I, I got a yes. Okay. Y'all come on up. Thank you, guys. I don't know. Okay, I'm like, I, I don't, you can't. Hazel can't let help you win, though, okay? She can stand here, but you can't accept, can't have her giving you answers. Y'all come up here, okay? So we got Tank. We got Michael. You ready? Good to lose. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is family feud style. What that means is that you're going to stand with your hands behind your back, okay? And I'm going to read, I'm going to read the question. It's multiple choice, so we're making it easier on you. And um, if you think you know the answer at any time, you can ring that bell, but I'm going to stop reading the question, and you're going to answer. If you get it wrong, I'll read the rest of the question, and the other person can have a chance to steal, okay? And everyone can say, good answer, if you want to, okay? Because that's the best part of Family Feud, right? So um, question number one, John Wesley served as a missionary to what state? A, Texas, B, Delaware, C, Georgia, D, all of the above? Uh, Delaware. Wrong. Wrong. Okay, Georgia. Georgia, that's right. Good answer. Oh. Woo! I was like, crap, there's two more. <laughs> awesome job. That's okay. It's all good. We're, this is all fun, 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 fun. Um, <laughs> they gave me the answer, so, you know. <laughs> okay. 
Ready? At a society meeting, on what street was Wesley's heart strangely warmed? A, Sesame Street. B, Straight Street. C, Aldersgate Street. D, all of the above. Aldersgate. Aldersgate. That's right. That's right. That sounded right, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Number three. What was the name of John Wesley's mother? A, Susanna. B, Samantha. C, Sarah. D, all of the above. <laughs> Wrong. Uh, Susanna, Samantha, Sarah, all of the above. Susanna. That's right. That's right. Good answer. Good answer. All right. Number four. What denomination was John Wesley a lifelong member of? Methodist. No. Do you want me to read all the answers? Oh, yeah, let's <laughs> no, it's a, it's, a, it's a trick question. It's a trick question, right? So A, United Methodist, B, Anglican, C, Lutheran, D, all of the above. Did I say Anglican? It was Anglican. Oh, That's I'm right. Sorry. Yeah, it's trick. I'm sorry. I yep, I know. I knew it was coming. Okay, number five. What year was the United Methodist Church founded? A, 1903, B, 1968, C, 1776, D, all of the above. Uh, no, that was 1776, but it wasn't C either. So do you want to guess? 300 years ago. Yeah. 1903, 1968, 1776. I want to say A. No. It's either B. There you go. <laughs> Did I say 200 years ago? I don't know. Oh, his birthday. No, but that was his birthday, and then he was founded the Methodist Church. Uh, uh, the United, it's, it's a long story. I'm going to let Pastor Rick explain that when he gets back from the sabbatical, okay? So, all right. I believe the final score was three to two. So you did a great job. Good job. Y'all shake, shake it out. You win your own limited edition. John Wesley Bubblehead. Awesome. I hope you guys had fun with that. And I, and I really mean it. I hope that you had some fun here today in the Fellowship Hall. Um, I hope you laughed, and I hope you had a great time in this holy place of worship. Because you see, sometimes I think, uh, I'm afraid that we have this idea that advancing the kingdom and fun don't go together. That we have to leave the parties and the fun if we want to be serious about the kingdom of God. But today, I want to remind you that play is a part of God's plan. God intends for recreation to be a balancing part of our lives. Um, I'm gonna give you the definition of recreation. It's, it's um, defined as activity done for enjoyment when you're not working. So recreation, activity done for enjoyment when you're not working. So even if you really love your job and it's a lot of fun, recreation is something you do when you're not working, when you're having fun. And I don't know about you, but that sounds a lot like Sabbath. Last week, we started this series and we discussed Sabbath, and we used this Jenga game as an illustration. And I want to I want to remind you, um, Jenga is a lot of fun to play. I guess if you're a crazy person, it gives me anxiety, but it's fine. Um, you know the Jenga. I'm not going to play it because I'm terrible. We're just going to pretend. So you take pieces from the bottom, you add them to the top, and as you're doing that, the bottom gets a little bit less stable, right? And eventually, it gets too unstable and it topples over. And life, um, it's an illustration of life. So as you're going through your week and you, um, you've you got, you know, baseball practice for your kids that you've got to be at. I'm really bad at this game. Y'all just pretend like I'm playing. But you've got baseball game. I did it. And, uh, and you've got to be there earlier for that every day so you don't want to forget. And then maybe you've got this big project due at work, so you've got to work a little bit later in the evenings. And, uh, and so that's taking some time. And then you um, are teaching your Sunday school class, so you've got to make time to prepare for that. And then you've got dinner that you need to prepare because who's, somebody's got to feed everybody. And eventually your, your Jenga tower starts to get a little wobbly, right? And eventually it's not, it can't play it forever. And at some point the Jenga tower falls over. And Sabbath is God's opportunity to reset that Jenga tower 
so that you can play it again. Sabbath is this idea of recreation, that we're having fun and we're enjoying ourselves, and recreation, that we're letting God renew us and restore us. And when, we put the, when we're practicing those things, it gives God the chance to reset that Jenga tower so that you're not just trying to keep it all balanced. Um, I'm gonna be honest with y'all this morning. I had a little, stress, little stressful thing happen, right? And in my mind, it became a huge stress and it, my Jenga tower tumbled and I thought, how am I gonna get through today? This is all ruined and I can't keep it all together. And what God reminded me of as I was going through that stressful moment, he was like, Kayla, you gotta let me reset that Jenga tower. Because even though that was this little stress that really wasn't a big deal, my Jenga tower was already unstable, right? I didn't spend my time in Sabbath this weekend like I should have, didn't let God reset it. And that little stress made it tumble over. And that's what happens when you're going through your week and you think, well, I'll just rest next week. I'll take the time next week to reset my Jenga tower. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. We're not made to just keep playing because it's not, that's just not how we're designed. And so today we're gonna talk about recreation. And um, we, I wanna ask you, how much fun would Jenga be if you never played the game? If you just let it sit like a tower? If you called your friends and you said, hey, will you, come, you wanna come over this weekend? We're gonna look at the Jenga tower. It's gonna be super fun. (laughs) No, you invite your friends over to play with the Jenga tower, right? Um, And that's how life is that we we were made to have fun and, and play is a part of God's plan. Recreation should be a regular balancing part of our lives. And so I want you to think about this for a moment. Would a non believer want to get to know a boring God? Or would they want to spend time with a group of boring people? As children of God, we have the greatest source of joy available to us, and we should be the happiest, most fun-loving, and joy-filled people that non-Christians encounter. Uh, For me, a memory that's ingrained in my mind is uh, in high school, I was 16 years old at a youth camp, and I was just starting to sort of get involved in church and realizing that I wanted to be a part of uh, my youth group. And we're at worship um, on, th- on Thursday night, which at camp Thursday night is usually called cry night because that's the night where everybody cries. And, um, <laughs> uh, and a lot of times it's a very serious moment and God does some really cool things, but this was such a different experience for me. We're at camp and we're, uh, we're had the altar call and the worship team gets back up. And instead of... Um, instead of it being kind of this serious moment, they broke out into this really fun song. And um, I can't, the the name of the song's not coming to me right now because I have two kids and my brain's kind of mushy, right? But but I remember being on the front row and I was like, well, this is different than anything I've experienced before. And we were jumping around and dancing, but all like genuinely praising God. And And I left that worship service and I thought, this is what I wanna be a part of. This is joy, this is fun. Um, this, I, this is it. And, um, and that's always stuck with me that, uh, yes, God is um, a God of order and we have boundaries. Uh, if you remember a sermon series from a while back, you may hear us reference it sometimes. We said healthy boundaries foster life. They don't foster boredom. And I think that we have to come back to realize that God is a God of recreation and of fun and play is a part of his plan for our lives. We're not made to be boring just staring at the Jenga tower. Um, you know, it, it was customary uh, in the culture of Jesus' time to value the gift of community and family and celebrations like Jewish weddings, like we read in our scripture this morning. It was a feast and a celebration, and it would last for several days. Uh, great preparations were made, and it would have been a disgrace for that host to not serve the best wine or to run out of wine. Um, Like the scripture said, often the host would serve the best wine first and then after people started to get drunk, uh, he would serve the cheaper stuff. But we have to remember that God is a God of abundance and not scarcity. Um, Weddings were an especially important occasion in the Jewish culture. Um, I don't know if you've seen the series Chosen. Uh, It's on... um, it's on YouTube. I know there's a free app available now where you can watch uh, these videos. And it's this series about the life of Jesus. 
Um, very well done. I would encourage you to take a look at that if you haven't seen it yet. But this morning, we're going to watch a video clip of this, uh, the scripture passage we just read. Um, we're going to watch it on the screen. So let's check that out. Stop the music! Stop the music! Everyone, listen! I have something I would like to say. I would like to address the bridegroom and the bride families. At every wedding I've ever overseen, they serve the best wine first. And then, when the people have drunk freely, much later in the feast, they serve the poorer wine, the cheap stuff. <laughs> because by then, who is going to notice? <laughs> Am I right? But you, you have chosen now to serve the best wine I have ever tasted. Let us thank them for this unnecessary but honorable gesture. Asher, son of Rafi and Dinah, to Sarah, daughter of Abner and Hila, be as pure and as fruitful as this wine. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. To Asher and Sarah! something wrong? Yes. I was. Fish, wine, what will be next? Any suggestions? Anything and everything. Let's do this. I'll go with you to the ends of the earth. I hope so, Simon. But I seem to remember there was a problem. Something about Andrew's feet. Andrew's feet. But first, we must evaluate, no? No, uh, no, 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 I can't. I think we have to. No, 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 I can't. <laughs> I think that is such a neat depiction of, of Jesus having a good time. You know, we, we read the scriptures, and I, what I love about that video in that series is that it, it brings us this visual of, of what Jesus was like and what he did and what he went through. And um, 
it's so cool to see Jesus enjoying himself at that wedding celebration. And you see him, he has friends and he's joking around and he's having a good time. And um, yes, Jesus had some serious things to do on this earth, but he also made time for recreation and he made time for fun with his friends and his family. Um, there is a, sorry, let me go to this page. <laughs> um, I think that God longs to give us this revelation of how incredibly fun it is to have him as our father. And he longs to guide us in this lifestyle of abundant joy and to remember that play is a part of his plan for our lives. Um, God's fun may look different than the world's, right? So there's fun that the world has that we, we would choose not to partake in. But even though that looks different, um, we have to remember that fun outside of God's boundaries is just a cheap imitation that won't last. Like we said, healthy boundaries foster life, not boredom. Um, there's lots of examples in scripture about God's children experiencing joy that is unattainable apart from God. I'm gonna read some of those to you. Psalm 1611, David writes, you make known to me the path of life and your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The fullness of fun is found with God because he guides us to that path of true life. He sets us free, he heals us, loves us, rejoices over us, has grace for us, and longs to fulfill our desires. Uh, John 10.10 10 is a scripture I think we've referenced several times over the past few weeks. He says, the thief comes to steal and kill, steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly, abundantly. God longs to lead you to that fullness of life today and he longs to guide you to those riches of his love and experience the fun <laughs> that, it that it can be to have him as your Lord and Savior. Um, our father loves parties. <laughs> uh, I think just seeing that, again, seeing that video clip of Jesus at a party and how much fun he was having, that seems, might seem foreign. It might seem like, uh, what? <laughs> Um, but I want to read a scripture to you from Ecclesiastes 2, 24 through 26. Uh, There's nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also I saw is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? For to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. Uh, you know, in our scripture this morning and in that clip, Jesus' first miracle was turning water into wine to keep this feast going, to keep the party going. Uh, you see in Revelation 19, the foretelling of this great marriage between the lamb uh, and, and his bride where we celebrate our total and complete union to, with God, and that's the party to end all parties. Psalm 30, 11, and 12, I'm gonna read that. It says, you've turned for me my mourning into dancing. You've loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O oh, Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. What I love about this scripture is that um, as much as we're talking about fun and recreation, I don't wanna be oblivious to the fact that life is hard sometimes. And there is sadness and there's grief, and there's disappointment and there's discouragement, there's depression. Um, but God even takes those things. He wants to take those burdens. He wants to take your mourning and give you dancing. To take your, um, they call it sackcloth, but your, um, again, that's kind of this idea of like mourning and, and repentance and shame and clothe you with gladness that you would praise God even in the midst of those hard things. So I don't want you to hear that we're just being flippant about the fact that life can be difficult and life can be hard. But the joy that we have is that Christ walks with us through that. And um, he still wants to give you joy and fullness and abundant life. Um, I'm gonna wrap up this morning. I wanna invite our worship team back up. And I wanna encourage you just for a couple of things this, this week. Um, examine your life and really look at it honestly. 
Does your life reveal that you believe that play is a part of God's plan for you? Do you, do you think recreation is something that you are intentional about or something that you can do without feeling guilty? Um, I know my husband, he uh, works really hard for our family and he farms with his family sometimes. And sometimes him taking a day to just have some fun, he struggles with feeling guilty about that because there's always more to get done, right? But I wanna encourage you, if that's you this morning, that um, play is a part of God's plan for your life. We have to have balance. We have to give God opportunity to reset that Jenga tower because we're not made to just keep running and running and working and never resting and never having time to play. Um, Here's a few ideas for this week. Uh, I love dad jokes. If you need a moment of fun, just Google free dad jokes. It'll be fun, I promise. I'm gonna give you that one for free. Uh, checking out some funny videos just to, to have some joy and to laugh. Maybe play a board game or cards or Jenga with your friends, invite them over uh, or with your family. But once a month, what if you scheduled something fun to do once a month? And it does two things. It, it fills that time before the event with anticipation. And then you get to experience the joy and the fun of that anticipation being fulfilled when that event finally arrives. Just once a month. Just start with that. That may seem really big. It may seem really small. But I think it's a starting place for all of us. Once a month, plan something fun with your family, for yourself, or for, with your friends. And the last thing, um, I want to encourage you to come to our Wesley birthday block party this Wednesday. Uh, it's this Wednesday, 6 to 8, here at the church. It's for both of our campuses, and it is going to be a time of fun and play. And so I, I hope you'll come, come be a part of that. I'll talk more about it in a minute. But, um, but I really hope you'll take this week and find out where can you have some play, where can you have some fun, and where can you put this into practice. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your good plans that you have for our life. Father, I thank you that you uh, are a God who cares about us when we're struggling. You care about us when we um, are in need and we're just um, worn out or tired, um, worn down or discouraged. Father, that you tell us to cast those cares upon you Father, that we would lay them at your feet. You tell us, come to me, those who are um, burdened and heavy laden. I will give you rest. And so, Father, I pray that um, for anyone who's in that season right now, this morning, I pray that they would um, make a choice to cast that upon you, to trust in you, and to come to you, and that you would give them rest, Father, that you would give them um, joy, peace and perseverance. And I pray that all of us this week, we would find a way to, um, to play, to have fun, but to show the joy that you've given us, that you've placed inside of us. Father, help us to be people of joy, that we would shine your light for those around us that don't know you or they don't believe in you. Father God, you can take that um, just the little moments that we have, the little things that we do, and you can use it for your glory and you can reach um, the lost. And so we, pr we pray that you would do that and pray that you would help us to be obedient. And we pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. If you guys will stand up with us, we're gonna sing the Holy Spirit.
As we uh, 
close this morning, I want to invite our ushers forward to take our offering. Um, and while they're collecting that, I want to give you a couple of announcements. Um, like I mentioned, this Wednesday is our Wesley birthday block party. Uh, it'll be kind of in the back and on the, um, whatever that street is right there. And um, is that 19th? 19th? 18th? 19th. I had it right. Um, 19th Street and in the back of the church. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to have hot dogs. Uh, it'll be a de- dessert buffet. If you want to bring a dessert to share, um, we'll have lots of games and a bounce house. I, I heard a rumor about a bounce house obstacle course that adults and kids can get in. So uh, so come be a part of that. I saw Will Miller give me a, like, yes. Excited, um, so that'll be super fun. Um, we do. We'd love to have you RSVP for that. Um, you can do that by emailing uh, Charlie. You can email um, Debbie at First Methodist Church. Her email's in the bulletin there. Uh, you already turned in your Connect card, but you can. Uh, you could have also written your RSVP on that uh, as well. But we just like a head count for hot dogs, so we have enough food for everybody. Um, there is also going to be a cornhole tournament. Um, the time has changed on that. So instead of 5 o'clock, it's going to start about 6.30 because we realize this is a weekday, not a Sunday. And so a lot of people can't get there that early. And so if you'd like to be a part of that cornhole tournament, um, you can contact Tim Gilliland. His email is in the bulletin here. Um, and it's $20 a team. All that money we raise is going to go towards our ministry that we do at Canyon Intermediate School and at Westover Park Junior High in Amarillo. Um, And so that'll be um, a great ministry, but also just a lot of fun playing cornhole and um, and, uh, participating in that. Um, I also want to mention our Camp Nova wish list on Amazon. Um, If you go to Amazon and you click on uh, custom gift, gift lists and you search for Camp Nova 2021 wish list, Instructions are there in your, in your announcements. Uh, we have just some items on there that we need to purchase for camp this summer for recreation, for our breakout sessions, um, and other things. And so if you'd like to help support that, we just we would love it if you would uh, check that out this week. Um, next week, I'll probably have to start ordering things that, that aren't purchased uh, as a gift. So uh, if you could take a look at that this week, that'd be awesome. We'd really appreciate your support. And we ask for your continued prayers for Camp Nova as we get ready for that. That's in two weeks. Um, and, uh, that's, if you don't know what it is, it's a camp that our church started six years ago and that we helped direct out at Cedar Canyon for seventh through 12th graders. So I think that's all I got. Um, we, uh, I want you to hear this benediction. Will you stand with me? I hope that you have a great week this week, but here's my benediction. In honor of John Wesley's birthday, there's birthday cake in the back. It's been blessed. It won't ruin your lunch. Okay. Um, it's got a special blessing, no calories. So please grab a piece on your way out and, uh, and find time this week to have fun and to play and see that part of God's plan for your life. Amen.